In this day of training, you have created pages in your application using flex states and you learn how to animate components using effects. In this video, you will combine your knowledge of states and effects to create animated transitions between states. You will learn how to create multi-component composite effects and to control the timing for when components appear and disappear during the animation. Here's the employee portal application with the two application states. In the last exercise, you implemented some simple authentication. If I type in the wrong username and password, then the login panel shakes to let me know that my information is incorrect. If I type in the correct authentication, then when I click the submit button, the application state changes to display the main portal content. When I click the log out button, the application state returns to the login screen. The transition between the states, however, is rather abrupt. In this video, I will show you how to implement animated transitions between the two states. As you can see here, when I log in, and log out, the content in each state moves and fades as the application states change. I will show you how to use the effects that you learned in the last video and exercise in these transitions. You will also learn how to explicitly control the appearance and disappearance of components that exist in one state but not the other. Here is the starter application file. I have located the states block and you can see that this application has two states named portal state and login state. As you know, the default state of any component is the state that is defined first. However, in this case, you have set the current state property of the application component to the login state, which is why it appears by default. To create a transition, you define one or more states to transition between. You also define the order in which you want the effects and the nature of the effects. The effects must define the components that they target. All of your transitions should be defined in the transitions property of the component. This is a single block of code that contains an array of transition definitions. Each transition is defined with a transition instance, which declares the states to transition between using the from state and to state properties. The from state property declares the name property of the state that the component should be in for the animation to start. The to state property declares the name property of the state that the component should be in for the animation to end. Note that both the from state and to state property values must match for the transition to play. Each transition instance also defines the effects and components to animate. The first transition block in this code declares that the animation should only run if the application is moving from the login state to the portal state. The second transition says the opposite. Its defined effects should only run if the application is moving from the portal state to the login state. Note that you can refer to any state by using the asterisk in the from state or to state properties of the transition instance. For instance, this transition says that the animation should run if any state switches to the portal state. Back in Flash Builder, I'm locating the state's property block again, and I'm creating the transitions block of the application below it. Within the transition block, I'm creating a transition instance and assigning the from state property a value of login state. I'm setting the to state properties value to the portal state. I will create an animation for the reverse transition later. To define the components you want to animate and how they will move, you define the effects within the transition instance. The rules for using effects are the same as you learned in the last video and exercise. Remember that you use the target property with the binding syntax to reference the ID property of the component you want to animate. You use the targets with an S property with the array bracket syntax inside of the curly braces for the binding to declare multiple components for the effect. You can also use the parallel and sequence composite effects to group two or more effects that you would like to play in parallel or in sequence respectively. 
If you define the targets for a composite effect, you can still further refine the movement of each component by also defining target or targets property for the nested effect. In this code, you can see that the parallel composite effect targets multiple components, but that each component also is modified by its own specific effect. Note that the fade effect does not have a target property defined and will therefore target all the components listed in the parallel effect. Some of the effects I have shown you have starting or ending values and some do not. If an effect does not explicitly define a start or ending value, Flex will do its best to determine them for you based on the property's values in either the starting or ending state. If you do not get the expected results from your transition definition, try explicitly defining starting and ending values for the properties you are animating. When the application switches from the login state to the portal state, I want to fade and move the employee of the month panel container at the same time. I have accidentally created the transition block as a single tag, so I'm changing it to block syntax. Now between the transition tags, I'm creating a parallel effect tag block with a target property bound to the employee of the month instance. Within the parallel effect tags, I'm adding a fade effect followed by a move effect. Once you have your transitions defined, the only thing left to do is to play it. You do not need to apply any special events or triggers to play a transition because transitions are automatically played when the application switches between the states defined in a transitions from state and to state properties. When a state changes, Flex searches for and runs the transition instance that matches those two values. If more than one transition matches, Flex uses the first match it finds. Back in Flash Builder, I am saving the file and running the application. Now I'm logging in. You can see that the login container disappeared and that the employee of the month panel container moved into place, but it didn't fade since it exists in both states. The other panel containers in the portal state just appeared. I want the employee directory, cafeteria special, and monthly events containers to also fade and animate into place. Back in Flash Builder, I'm converting the target property of the parallel effect to the targets property. Next, I'm assigning the targets property value to the four panel instances inside of array syntax square brackets. Note that I want all of the panel instances to fade in except for the employee of the month panel, which already appears in both states. By simply leaving the fade effect without any properties, the application will automatically determine the alpha property of each target component and extrapolate from there how to make it fade from one state to the other. As I mentioned, since the employee of the month instance is visible in each state already, it won't fade, but the other three will. The employee of the month instance also has an obvious beginning and ending position, while the other three panel instances do not. To handle the movement of the employee of the month instance, I am assigning the target property of the existing move effect to the employee of the month instance. I want each of the other three panel instances to move in from a different direction. Unfortunately, they do not exist in the transition's beginning state, so I cannot explicitly position them in that state and then have Flex move them to a new location. Instead, I'm going to explicitly define a start position for each one of them in their own move effect instances. This figure shows the relative start position of the search cafeteria special and monthly events instances. Below the move effect for the employee of the month instance, I'm adding another move effect instance with a target property value set to the 
search instance. I'm setting its x from property value to minus 166, which will place the container off stage to the left. Now I'm adding a third move effect and assigning the target property to the cafeteria special instance with a y from property value set to minus 329 pixels. This will start the move effect for the cafeteria special instance off stage to the top. Lastly, I'm adding a fourth move effect and assigning it a target property value of monthly events with an x from property of 833, which is off stage to the right. I'm saving the file, running the application, and logging in. You can see that the login container disappears and the employee of the month panel moves to the left while the other three panels fade in and move into place. I have just handled the animation for the content in the portal state, but before that state appears, I should first handle the content in the login state. Instead of just having the login panel disappear, I want to fade it out while moving the employee of the month panel to the left. To accomplish this, I must nest composite effects. I'm surrounding the parallel effect with a sequence effect tag block. And then highlighting the parallel effect and using the tab key to indent it. Between the opening sequence tag and the parallel effect, I'm creating another parallel effect instance. This will handle the animation for the login state elements. I've indented the new parallel block too far, so I'm highlighting it and then unindenting it by typing Shift Tab. Within the new parallel effect tags, I'm adding a fade effect instance with the target value set to the login instance. Under the fade effect, I'm adding a move effect and assigning the target property value to the login instance. I'm also adding the x2 property with a value of minus 266. I could have put the target property on the parallel effect instead of on these two instances. However, I will next add more effects inside of this composite effect that target another component. I'm locating the move effect for the employee of the month instance and cutting it from the beginning of the second parallel effect and pasting it at the end of the first. Now I'm removing the employee of the month panel instance name from the target's property value of the second parallel effect. The changes that I just made will fade the login panel out while the employee of the month panel moves into its new location. Only after that happens will the second set of effects run, which animate the rest of the portal state panels into place. I'm saving the file and then running the application and logging into the employee portal. When I run it, you can see that the animation is not correct. The panel containers within the portal state are visible in their final locations before the animation occurs. Let me run that again by logging out and then logging back in. You are seeing this problem because Flex cannot always determine when, during a transition, a component that doesn't exist in both states should be added or removed from the animation. In my example, the login container exists in the login state, but not the portal state, and the search cafeteria special and monthly events containers exist in the portal state, but not the login state. 
Strange animation behavior like you just saw is a common symptom of Flex needing more information to properly animate the components. The best practice for handling components that don't exist in both states is to explicitly state when to add or remove them during the animation. You use the Add Action effect to define when the specified targets should be added to the animation and the Remove Action effect to define when the target should be removed from the animation. Back in Flash Builder, I am placing my cursor between the two nested parallel composite effects. The first parallel effect fades the login instance off the screen, so I can now tell Flex to remove the login screen from the application. I'm adding a Remove Action tag with a target property bound to the login instance. The next parallel effect block handles the three new panel instances for the portal state. So the first line of the effect will be the add action effect. Remember that this add action effect will target the three components defined within the parallel effect. Now when I save the application and run it and log in, you can see that the components all animate properly except that I want to make some slight fixes to the Employee of the Month container. Back in Flash Builder, I'm locating the first parallel effect tag and move effect that targets the Employee of the Month instance. I'm giving it an X from property with a value of 298 and an X to property with a value of 24. Above the code I just modified, I'm adding a resize effect that also targets the employee of the month instance. I'm explicitly directing the panel instance to resize based on a width from property value of 390 to a width to property value of 250. Note that what I am doing is refining the animation on the employee of the month instance during the first part of the animation. As the login panel transitions out, the Employee of the Month panel will resize as it moves to its new position in the portal state. When I save the application, run it, and log in, you can see that the Employee of the Month panel moves and resizes on its way to its new position in the portal state. Now I will reverse the animation from the portal state back to the login state. So to the opening transition tag, I'm adding the auto reverse property with a value of true. I'm saving the file, running the application, and logging in. Notice that the transition that we have created in this video reverses when I log out but the animation doesn't look quite right. Back in Flash Builder, I'm removing the Auto Reverse property. The last task for this video is to create a second transition to animate the components when the user logs out of the application. Within the Transitions tag block, below the existing transition block, I'm adding another transition block. To the new transition instance, I'm assigning the from state to the value of portal state and the to state to the value of login state. When the user logs out of the employee portal application, I will fade out the search, cafeteria special, and monthly events panels while the employee of the month instance resizes and moves to its proper position in the login state. Only after that happens will I handle the login panel. Therefore, I must again use a sequence composite effect with a nested parallel effect 
to handle the components in the portal state and a fade effect to handle the login panel. I'm adding the sequence tag block with the nested parallel tag block. Within the parallel effect, I'm adding a fade effect and setting the target's property value to the search cafeteria special and monthly events panels. Next, I'm adding a resize effect to target the employee of the month instance and reversing the width from 250 pixels to 390 pixels. Lastly, I'm adding a move effect that also targets the employee of the month panel instance. It has an X from property value of 24 and an X to property of 434. This will move the employee of the month instance to its proper position in the login state at the same time that it resizes the panel and fades out the other three panels. Below the parallel composite effect, but still inside of the sequence effect, I'm creating a fade effect that targets the login instance. This will fade the login instance into view. To recap, in the previous steps, I have defined the animations that should occur in sequence. First of all, the panels in the portal state will fade except the employee of the month panel, which will move and resize into its new position. Then the login panel will fade into view in the login state. Lastly, I need to define when the panels that do not exist in both states need to be added or removed during the transition. Between the parallel composite effect and the fade effect, I am adding the remove action tag and assigning the target's property value to the search cafeteria special and monthly events panels. Once these panel instances are animated and fade out, they can be removed from the application. Next, I'm adding an add action tag and assigning the target property value to the login panel container. Since the login instance doesn't exist in the portal state, I must explicitly add it before I use it in the fade effect. I'm saving the file and running the application. After I log in, you can see that the application animates into the portal state properly. Now when I click the logout button, you can see that the employee of the month panel container moves and resizes while the other panels fade away. Only after that does the login panel container fade into view. For your next step, work through the exercise titled Applying Transitions to View States.